now it's on. Mm -hmm. Hello and welcome to our presentation about the project COSIMA, which stands for Communication Simulation with Agents. First of all, we'd like to introduce ourselves. My name is Frau Oost. I'm a senior researcher at Office and PhD student and researcher at um, the Department of Computer Science at the University of Oldenburg. Hello, my name is Emily Frost. I'm a researcher at Office and I'm also a PhD student and researcher at the University of Oldenburg. Also, hello from my side again. Uh, my name is Marlon Radke, and I'm also a researcher at Office and a master student at Computer Science at the University of Oldenburg. We'd also like to take the chance to introduce the Office a bit. Office is a state-funded research institute in Oldenburg in Germany, and it was founded about 30 years ago. Uh, but nowadays has 250 scientists in about in four research and development divisions, uh, which are energy, health, manufacturing, and society. And in the division uh, energy, we are conducting energy informatics research. The energy informatics at Oldenburg has already a long history. It started in 1995 with the first wind power information system. In 2003, we had early decentralized energy management systems. And in 2010, we had the first energy informatics professorship in Germany. And now we have already four of them. And uh, this year, we have 30 ongoing research projects. And we are the, the largest energy informatics team in Germany and probably also in the EU. EU with about 100 researchers. Uh, to establish the digitalized energy systems, we have uh, um, we have basically five topics, um, five major topics, which is the resilient self-organization, social technical aspects, efficient processes for modeling and simulation, and risk analysis and management, and highly automated and secure operation, which is um, su supported by the topics sustainability and system our system and challenges and open science. Our group here is located more on the resilient self-organizational part, where we want to implement multi-agent systems to um, solve problems in the power system. So we have our multi-agent system that solves um, a problem that could be the balancing of generation and consumption in the grid and um, each agent could be in control of such a consumer or uh, generator. In the multi-agent system, these agents can communicate to each other and the communication is supported by the underlying communication infrastructure. And what we want to have a look at is, um, for example, what would happen in, if in the underlying infrastructure um, the communication line is congested or even failing, what would happen if one agent is not reachable anymore or what could happen if, for example, a generation um, is not sufficient, which leads to maybe a small regional blackout, which is also impacting the, the communication system. Um, and also, we want to have a look at not just one multi-agent system solving a task, but maybe multiple multi-agent systems or other smart grid applications, and how the underlying communication infrastructure could support the, yeah, the needs for those uh, smart grid applications. Therefore, we want to create a multi-agent system robust to failures, consider the interaction between power and communication system, and optimize the communication flow for multi, uh, multiple smart grid applications. So from these use cases, uh, we have some requirements for our integrated communication simulation, uh, which are the objectives for our COSIMA project. That is the ability to model and simulate uh, wired and wireless communication systems with regards to different OC layers the capability to flexibly and capacity configure, configure the network, for example, by SDN, have the ability to ensure quality of services by implementing, for example, traffic shaping or prioritization, have the ability to external control networks, the ability to manipulate infrastructure devices in the simulation runtime, and have a co-simulation with power system to integrate information about operational technology availability uh, into the communication simulation. That's how we envision our simulation environment. So we have Mango Agents, which is our multi-agent system framework um, that can be directly communicating via the co-simulation framework Mosaic with 
the models of, um, for example, wind turbine or uh, battery storage um, and might be connected to, for example, power analysis tools such as Panda Power. If an agent wants to communicate with another agent, the message should then also go to Mosaic and Mosaic will coordinate it um, by sending it to Omnet. Then the message will be simulated with an Omnet and this, the simulated message with the delay information is then given back to Mosaic, which will integrate the delay information and give then the information back to the receiving agent. We also want to have um, other information from Omnet, such as other ICT status information or statistics given to um, another simulator, which we co would call ICT controller or observer. And this ICT controller observer is also to take actions within the Omnet simulation, such as disconnecting or reconnecting, for example, switches, routers, or um, other hosts. I will now present um, Mosaic. Mosaic is a co-simulation framework and it um, contains discrete time and discrete event simulation. I will explain the difference in a second. Um, furthermore, Mosaic um, allows accelerated and real-time simulation and has the ability to integrate IP protected components. Um, it furthermore allows the scaling of simulations on compute clusters. And although Mosaic is Python-based, um, it's possible to connect to simulators of all languages through TCP and JSON-based connections. Um, Mosaic is open source. We um, put the link here for everybody who's interested. And um, we further want to point out the Mosaic ecosystem, which already contains a lot of simulation models. Um, for example, for the power system, there are, for example, PV plant simulators. Um, and there are already wrappers for other programming languages, um, interfaces for simulation tools, and um, tools for visualization and data storage. So with the new Mosaic version, Mosaic 3.0.0, uh, Mosaic also um, contains discrete event capabilities and First, I want to start with the explanation of time-based. Um, in time-based simulations, the simulation components can only schedule steps for themselves. So they only schedule um, steps at regular times. And in order to not miss any potential message from other components, they have to step themselves for every simulation step. And um, if you imagine we would have, for example, a communication simulation where the um, resolution is within milliseconds, um, a very high time resolution would be needed um, yeah, to step the simulator in every step, and this could lead to performance issues. Um, therefore, Mosaic integrated event-based simulation. Um, here, the simulator is stepped as soon as there's new data available, um, and thus Mosaic takes into account that the state of the system can change at a specific time. Um, therefore, the simulator doesn't have to um, step itself, um, itself, itself, but it will be stepped when there's new data available, but still there's the option to trigger itself. Um, Mosaic enables the event-based simulation with the max advance value, which I will explain now because we use it for our simulation. Um, the max advance value is given to each simulator in every step with the current simulation time. And it tells the simulator how far it can advance in time without expecting new inputs. So the simulator can progress until this max advance value without being interrupted by Blake and risking causality errors. Here you can see um, kind of the schedule of our simulation. So um, as Park already told you, we have um, some planned um, simulators here and we have the agent simulators. And um, as you can see, um, between the planned simulators and the agent, um, there's a message exchange every 50 minutes because every 50 minutes the planned um, device takes its new power values and sets it to the agent. 
and there's no message exchange in between between those components. But whenever the the agents communicate with each other, we have um, a few messages in um, a very high resolution, which you can see by the Omnet side is because we simulate those messages um, in Omnet. So um, there are very different um, resolutions. And because of the discrete event capability, um, the EEC allows us to consider such behavior on our simulation. I will now explain our general architecture um, with an example for a message exchange. In this case, one agent wants to send a message to another agent. And as you can see, we have two sides. On the left side, we have Mosaic, where we have um, the agents, which are implemented as Mosaic simulators. And on the right side, we have Omnit. So um, whenever a, a, an agent wants to send a message, um, it first sends the message through the communication simulator. And in this case, um, client zero wants to send a message to client one. So the first step is that the message from client zero is sent to the communication simulator. The communication simulator is also a mosaic simulator and is the interface to the Omnet site. Um, thus, it will take the message from the agent and forward it to the mosaic scheduler um, by the TCP connection. And then the Mosaic scheduler is the interface from Omnet to Mosaic. And it will take the messages from the communication simulator and inserts those messages into the future event set. So in this case, this is the next step. And the Mosaic scheduler inserts the message from client zero into the future event set. And then for each Mosaic simulator, which is an agent, we have a representing module in Omnet. So as you can see, we have a module for client zero and a module for client one in this case. And because client zero is the sender of the message, um, the next step would be for the module for client zero to take the message and send it to client one. So the next thing is then the simulation of the message dispatched and whenever an agent receives the message in Omnet, it informs the mosaic scheduler about it. So in this case, the module of client one receives the message and then informs the mosaic scheduler about it, which will then forward the message with a given time to the communication simulator. Um, and the last step is that the communication simulator takes this message and sends it to the receiving agent. So as you can see, we now simulated one message um, exchange between agents. And since the message took its way over Mosaic and Omnet and the Omnet network, we can take into account information as, for example, delays. And as you can already see here, we have two different simulation times, um, one Mosaic simulation time and one Omnet simulation time. And that's why we need um, to synchronize those um, simulation times using synchronization points. And that's what I'm gonna explain now. Um, so again, we have the same example as before. Um, we have our two agent simulators, client zero and client one, and we have the communication simulator um, on Mosaic side. And on Omnet side, we have the Mosaic scheduler. And what now happens is that we have our first message um, from client zero to client one at time one. And um, that message is given from the agent simulator to the communication simulator. And the communication simulator then adds the max advance value, which is five in this example, to the message and sends the message to Omelette to the Mosaic scheduler. The Mosaic scheduler then inserts the max advance um, value as an event into the future event set for time five here, and also simulates the message. As the max advance value indicates um, when probably the next event might happen on Mosaic side, that's what happens next, because here now we have the second message, uh, which is a message from client one to client zero, and that's our next synchronization point. Um, so the communication simulator now adds the max advance value again, which is 14 now, 
um, sends the message to the Mosaic scheduler. And the Mosaic scheduler now inserts the max advance event now for time 14 and also simulates the second message. So now our next synchronization point is at time 10 because here um, the first message um, was received by the client one. And now the message is sent back to Mosaic, to the communication simulator and then to the agent simulator. Also, the second message now arrived at time 12 and the same happens again. Um, the Mosaic scheduler sends the message to the communication simulator and then the communication simulator coordinates um, the message disposal and sends back the message to the agent simulator of client zero. Um, in Cosima, we already provide a couple of features um, such as different start modes. It's possible to use the IDE or compiled executables and it's also very easy to adjust the number of agents using a configuration file. Um, also in the configuration file, it's possible to apply infrastructure changes such as disconnects and reconnects of clients, routers and switches. And that's happening then during the simulation of Omnet. And um, it's also possible to connect several PV plant simulators to the agents. And we already provide exemplary um, Omnet networks ready to use for the user. And it's possible to get an overview of the simulation based on the collected information during the simulation, such as the number of simulation steps and evaluation graphs. Next, I just want you to show um, two different scenarios that can be configured using the configuration file. Um, first, we have a disconnect of the end device of client one at time two milliseconds. And here we can see our configuration file. Um, you can already see that there are several parameters that can be set by the user. So it's very easy to use. And now we just add here our infrastructure changes. So disconnect time two and the module client one. And if we now start the simulation, we can see the Omnet window opening and we already saw the disconnect of client one here. So here we don't have the connection anymore. So that's the first scenario. And the second scenario um, I brought for today is a large network with 50 agents and all those agents are connected to PV plant simulators. And again, you can see the configuration file here and we can set the number of agents here. The maximum number agent is only dependent of the network in Omnet. So we need the number of end devices in Omnet as we have agents, of course. And again, we can start the simulation. We see different network popping up because that was configured in the configuration file. And now we can again see our messages to be sent between those agents. You can also see here in Mosaic that we have um, the logs from Omnet and also from Mosaic at one point. Um, so it's very easy for the user to see what happens either on Omnet and on Mosaic side and what kind of messages are to be sent. We also already did some evaluation um, of our integration. And here we used a small network set up in Omnet containing five agents, um, each connected with a PV plant simulator. And here we could see that um, the number of simulation steps and the simulation duration are significantly higher for the time-based simulation, um, what was kind of be expected. And um, we also did some evaluation on the scalability and um, could find out that with the number of simulation, uh, with increasing number of the agents, um, the simulation steps and the simulation duration did not significantly increase as well. 
So what we plan to do in the future is to integrate our multi-agent system library Mango into the simulation. We plan to enhance the usability by, for example, um, yeah, integrating a tutorial, and we want to add more functionality to the SCT controller by, for example, um, adding the disconnect functionality to wireless networks and also um, enable the adjustments to routing flows, for example, during the simulation time. And uh, yeah, if you want to have a look at our project, we have a website which is called cosima.office.de and we also have um, yeah, further links like read the docs uh, link, um, the GitLab where you can find our code or you can look at the preprint of the paper that we've written, which is under the archive um, website. And if you want to know more about what we do in our group, here's the link to um, yeah, our group website at the Office DE um, website. So thank you for listening. Um, are there some questions? I think there's one question. Yes, I'm not yeah, sure. Just, just <laughs> go ahead and open no. your room. Yeah, OK. Um, then thanks for the presentation. I had a question regarding this max advance uh, value. Uh, you said um, on the, there was a chart, uh, I think, on the slide was it, uh, 11 or so, where you showed how the max advance um, like cooperates with uh, simulation events or something like this. Yeah, here. So you said max advance is something like a, a value where um, Mosaic expects the next event to happen. So you said it empirically or like is there a way to like screw it up somehow or this max advance this, ma this max advance um value is coming from mosaic and it is calculated by looking into the already scheduled events in a sense so it's the events that are scheduled for the specific simulator so you don't have like uh, dynamically generated events or it, it can it recalculates this max advance continuously. Um, Mosaic also has some kind of scheduled events. And if events are scheduled, then this max advance um, value has the specific value. If there are not uh, events in the queue, then in the sense, um, max advance is set to the end of simulation, but mm. um, which is kind of the last event in, in Mosaic. Okay. So you don't have to, to really care about it, right? Sorry? You don't have to care about like setting this max advance somehow, mm -hmm. or it's just, OK. Mm -hmm. It's just given by the simulation itself. Mm -hmm. All right, thanks. Any other questions? Uh, yes. Um, actually, uh, I'm I'm very happy to see uh, the co-simulation framework like this because the the way I see in the uh, later the world has become much uh, much more complex so more and more and more complex pieces of uh, software and hardware pop up and it's getting more and more difficult to to create simulation most abstract simulation models for everything for example if we look at the uh, uh, New HTTP protocol based on speed, it's very complex. Or we look at the, uh, I don't know, uh, mobile base stations and stuff like that. It's be becoming very, very, it's becoming very, uh, very complex. And uh, the ambitions for simulations are also increasing. And uh, it's uh, basically uh, after a while, it only becomes feasible to to connect together various simulators or to tie virtualized real components into the simulation to be able to, to simulate what, what we need because of the increasing complexity of the world. So I'm, I'm very happy to see uh, the Mosaic uh, co-simulation framework because it uh, makes this kind of, this kind of uh, integrating various simulators together a lot easier. And uh, I would have a 
question that uh, quite a few years ago, there was a, a, a standard called HLA, high level architecture from, from the US government, I think Department of Defense, which, is, which was about uh, connecting together various simulators. And it had, uh, I think, different modes for synchronization. So like it could use real time and time stepping and even based and that kind of stuff. And it had a, a C++ API as well. I, I was just wondering what happened to that. Is is uh, how much is that used, or was it was it known at the time Mosaic was created, or did it, this AJLA and, and have any influence on, on Mosaic, or what do you think about this issue? For us, it's a bit hard to answer because we are not um, the the group that is developing Mosaic. Um, for us, the motivation was that we already had Mosaic as a framework and we had a lot of um, already existing models um, that we could use. Mm -hmm. okay, thank you. Any other questions? Maybe I had just extra one extra uh, regarding the uh, example. So here you used uh, the just the omnet and mosaic, right? No external or like third uh, simulator was involved. I we used a simulator in mosaic, but not like a whole other framework. I'm not sure if that's what you meant. Like uh, we connected a PV plant simulator to um, the agent simulator, which is again a different simulator, but those are mm -hmm. defined um, as part of Mosaic. Ah, okay, yeah. so I mean, in the example, there are already several interconnected simulators, not just like a proof of concept Omnet and Mosaic together, right? Yeah, and Omnet is also represented as a simulator in Mosaic. So Mosaic is kind of the the master. Um, algorithm in this um, setup. So all is gathered there as mm -hmm. different simulators. And when you showed the, um, the evaluation in terms of scalability for number of nodes on slide 16. Yeah. Give me a second. Mm -hmm. This is for uh, event-based simulation, right? Yes. Yeah, that's like the default option. We just use the uh, time-based um, simulation in order to compare to event-based, but we don't really use that. Mm -hmm. And uh, do you have any idea why is it such a uh, smooth or almost zero increase for you know, uh, dozens of extra agents? Um, I think because we don't have like um, uh, we use every step in this example, it's kind of time based now. It yeah, um, a lot of agent numbers because so, um, mm -hmm. you you get to the point that the event based simulation is kind of the same as the time based because you have to step every step because you have so many age, uh, events occurring in the simulation. Mm. So I think that's the point. So there is also some kind of limit here in terms of number yeah. of steps per, per second. Mm. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. It's like the time resolution we're working with uh, milliseconds. And if you have one step every millisecond, there's nothing more that can happen. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, thanks. Okay, then thanks a lot. And then we can start to prepare uh,